If you are looking for vertical career growth and getting higher salary than go for IT certifications. HadoopExam.com provides latest certification preparation material which is already used by more than 40,000 IT professionals. Prepare for Cloudra and Hortonworks Hoop Developer and Administration Certification Databricks Spark Certification in Python and Scala Cloud Technology Certifications like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud Databases Certification Cassandra, Oracle, Programming Language Certification in Java Analytics Certifications in SAS, Data Science and Machine Learning Visit HadoopExam.com now for getting all certification material Question, is this interview question helps in preparing the Cassandra Administrator or Developer Certification? Answer, certainly, that would help. These interview questions are not only for preparing for a particular interview but also helpful in various situations like If you are giving an interview for Cassandra Database Developer or Administration Position If you are planning to give Cassandra Certification either Administration or Developer Preparing the Cassandra certification please go through the question and answers provided by HadoopExam.com If you want to clear your exam in first attempt If you want to regularly learn or update your skills for Cassandra database then keep reading this question and answers on a regular basis If you have access to the audiobook for this interview question then regularly listen that audio come video book You can find audiobook at HadoopExam.com Question, what does it mean that Cassandra Database is an active anywhere database? Answer, Cassandra Database is deployed in the cluster, which usually has more than one node. And this can span across data centers, maybe physically separated data centers, as AWS availability zones, and can query any node in the cluster which should return the data, whether it holds or not. If node does not hold the data, it would find it from other nodes. Question, what is the ring? Answer, in the Cassandra world ring is same as cluster, collection of nodes grouped together. It is called ring because it works on the concept of the tokens, which decides on which node data should go. Tokens are generally evenly distributed across all the nodes. Question, how Cassandra makes sure that the data written on the node cannot be lost and remain durable? Answer, Cassandra always write data in two places, when first write request is received. 1. Memtable that is in memory, stored in the same structure as SS table. 2. Commit log, sequentially data would be persisted on hard disk. Once it is written on both the places then only Cassandra returns successful write acknowledgement to the client. Question, what protocol is used by Cassandra nodes to share the information with each other? Answer, gossip protocol. Using this protocol Cassandra nodes share the information with each other and learned about each nodes in the cluster. Question, is it a good idea to have heterogeneous nodes in the Cassandra cluster? Answer, no, it is recommended that you use the homogeneous nodes while creating or updating the cluster. Question, what exactly is the difference between memtable and commit log, the way data is stored? Answer, memtable is an in-memory data structure and it stores the data in the same format as SS table and indexed as well for faster retrieval but in commit log data stored sequentially which is useful when node crashes and you have to replay all the writes. Questions, why it is considered that Cassandra database is not a single point of failure database? Answer, Cassandra database considered not a single point of failure database because there is no master node concept. Each node in the cluster is equal, any node in the cluster can serve the request. Questions, what do you mean by coordinator node in the Cassandra cluster? Answer, the node which is responding to read and write request would become coordinator node, whether it has a data or not. Coordinator node's responsibility is to find the node which can serve the token range for read and write operation. During read it finds the node and then return data from that node. Question, how the token range is distributed in the Cassandra cluster? Answer, in the Cassandra cluster each node is responsible for a particular range of tokens to be hold the data. Let's assume there is a token range from 1 to 100. And in the Cassandra cluster there are 10 physical nodes with equal configuration. So, you can say that each node is responsible for handling data with 10 tokens. For example, node 1 would take care for token range 1 to 10 and similarly last node would take care for token 91 to token 100. Question, what do you mean by replication factor? Answer, to answer this question we need to understand how the Cassandra database is designed. 
In ideal situation Cassandra database is placed across multiple data center and there are three copies of data is distributed across the nodes and the cluster. However, number of copies are decided based on the replication factor, and one copy hold by each node, and the remaining two copies are kept on two different nodes in the cluster, which can be in a different rack or different data center. So even one of your nodes goes down then still there are two copies of the data would be available. Cassandra will immediately create third copy, once it found that there are data loss, and that can be achieved using gossip protocol. Question, what is the purpose of gossip protocol in Cassandra cluster? Answer, in Cassandra cluster each node should be aware about another node in the cluster, and gossip protocol is used to quickly share information about other nodes or any other metadata. Question, what is the role of the commit logs in the Cassandra? Answer, commit log is always reside on the disk. So, whenever data is written on particular node, then first it would be written to commit log sequentially, which remains durable, even in case of node crash, data can be replayed from the commit log. Question, is there a single commit log for each table? Answer, for each node there is one commit log and data written on any table would go in the same commit log on that particular node. Purpose of the commit log is to keep the data durable in case node goes down, and once node is back, it can be replayed again. Question, what is mem table and SS table how they are related? Answer, whenever data is written in Cassandra cluster, following three storage are involved. 1. Commit log. 2. Mem table. 3. SS table. Once write request is received, the first place Cassandra write the data in a commit log file and persist it on the disk. In case of failure, data can be replayed from the commit log which saves you from the data loss. Once data is persisted in commit log, it would also write the data in mem table. This is an in-memory data structure. Each table would have separate mem table data structure where data is stored based on the partition key and index. Once the size of the mem table reaches the defined limit it would flush the data in SS table. Again, SS table is a storage on the disk, which has the same format of the data as in the mem table. SS table is also known as sorted string table data file. Question, can you please provide some detail or specific properties of the SS table? Answer, SS table has the following property. 1. SS table is immutable. Once it is created it cannot be modified. 2. Cassandra creates new SS table from the existing SS table during the compaction process by merging more than one SS table. 3. SS table is sorted by partition key and primary key index. 4. Each table can have multiple SS table, but same SS table cannot be shared by any other table. Question, what do you mean by tombstone record? Answer, tombstone are the marker on the records that data would be deleted during next compaction process. As you know, once data is written the SS table, it cannot be deleted immediately from the SS table because SS tables are immutable. As part of next compaction cycle where multiple SS table data files would be merged and at the same time tombstone record would be taken care for deletion. Question, which query language is used to work with Cassandra database? Answer, to work with the Cassandra database you have to use CQL query language which is very similar to SQL. Question, is it a good choice or decision to have a single key space for multiple application? Answer, no. It is recommended that for each application you create a different key space. One key space can have multiple tables in it. Question, what do you mean by data center? Answer, data center is a group of related nodes which are configured together within cluster. The purpose is to have data replicated across multiple data center. Keep in mind that data center can be physical or virtual. However, to copy the data across multiple data center you have to do some configuration. Question, when should we delete the data from commit log or commit log file itself? Answer, once all the data from the mem table is flushed in the SS table then you can archive or delete the commit log files. Question, what information is stored by the gossip? Answer, gossip is a peer-to-peer -peer communication protocol which is used to discover and share location and state information about the other nodes in the cluster. Gossip information is persistent locally by each node to use immediately when a node restart. Question, how do you define a partitioner? Answer, it is the responsibility of the partitioner to distribute data evenly across the nodes of the cluster, and also helps in load balancing. 
partitioner determines which node in the cluster should receive the first replica of the data and how to distribute other replicas across the other nodes in the cluster. Similar to other databases each row of the data is uniquely identified by a primary key. And partitioner derive the hash value from the primary key of the row, which works as a token and based on the token value partitioner found the nodes in the cluster to place the replica of that row. Question. Which of the available partitioner should be a good choice for most of the cases? Answer: The murmurate partitioner is the default partitioning strategy in most of the cases. Question: How does Cassandra determines on which node the first replica of the data should be placed? Answer: There is a replication strategy which determines on which node the first replica and another replica should be placed. The network topology strategy is used in most of the cases, because for most of the deployment it is easier to expand to multiple data center when this strategy is used. Question: When do you define which replication strategy should be used? Answer: While creating key space, you must define the replica placement strategy and the number of replicas you want to use. Question: What is the unique feature about the first replica of the data? Answer: The first replica of data is simply the first copy and it is not unique in any sense. Using the replication strategy, storage engine determines on which node this replica should be placed as well as other remaining replicas. Question: How Cassandra storage engine determines the locations of the nodes and in which rack or data center a new node is placed? Answer: Using the snitch, which has mapped IP addresses of the node with the physical or virtual locations. For example, in which rack or data center a node is placed. With the help of Snitch, which uses the network topology for routing requests efficiently on a particular node on a rack in a particular data center. Question: How do you configure a Snitch? Answer: While creating a cluster, you need to configure a Snitch to propagate the information about the nodes using the Gossip protocol. A recommended approach is use the Gossiping property file Snitch. Question: Which all are the main configuration files in Cassandra? Answer: Below are the main configuration files. Cassandra.yam. See below question for more detail. JVM.options. Java related settings. Yam. While using data stacks solution. Questions. Can you give some example or what kind of configuration is done in Cassandra.yam file? Answer. The common configuration in the Cassandra.yam file are initialization property for the cluster, caching parameters for the tables. Parameters for resource utilization, security configuration, and timeout settings. Question: What is the basic principle while designing the data model for Cassandra database? Answer: In Cassandra database or NoSQL database, you should first think about the queries you would be performing on the database, and based on the query, you should design your database. And don't consider the entity relationship data modeling, which is being used for our DBMS. Question. How do you define the key space? Answer: In Cassandra, the outermost grouping of data is done using a key space. It is equivalent to the schema in our DBMS. The tables you want to create must belong to a key space. And also, replication is defined on the key space level. Question: If you want high cardinality in the data while doing the data modeling, how can you achieve this? Answer: In Cassandra, while doing the data modeling, you generally not consider the normalization and rather create the data tables having the denormalized data. It is fine to have duplicate data across more than one table, but still you want to have a cardinality or a relationship defined between two tables. Then you should consider using the materialized views. Question: What is the purpose of partition key and what it is? Answer: With the partition key, it would be decided on which node data should be stored, and also it divides the data into logical groups. You should keep in mind while deciding the partition key that data should be evenly distributed across the nodes in the cluster as much as possible, and avoid partition key, which requires query to read or write data across the partition. Because if your query has to read or write it across the partition, it would lead to a higher latency. Question: What is the purpose of clustering column? Answer: Assume if you have to retrieve the data in the sorted order, and while querying the data, if sorting is applied, it would affect overall performance of the query. So why not store the data in already sorted order? Purpose of having clustering column is to define rows sorted in a particular partition using clustering columns. Hence, while defining the clustering column, you must understand the purpose of the data. For example, if you wanted to retrieve the data based on the last or first transaction, then you should store the data based on the time in descending order. 
which would help in extracting data faster for the most recent transactions.